Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the back functional line. This is a long string of muscles where many large muscle groups work together, almost like they're one giant muscle. This is going to be coming from Anatomy Trains or Tom Myers. So look into his stuff. That's where I'm getting this information. And uh, it's going to be relevant. We're going to be using the example of a baseball pitcher, but we're using that dynamic motion to understand also static motions because sometimes static or isometric poses like you'd see in a yoga class are difficult to understand because there's no movement. So what the heck is actually working? And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a, a yoga pose that uses the back functional line that you can incorporate into your practice. So here's the quiz, pause the video, read it, and we'll get to the answer in just a moment. Hey, real quick, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get notifications when I release future videos and share this with your anatomy loving friends. And as I mentioned, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I will uh, tell you some yoga, uh, a yoga pose that you can do to incorporate the back and the front functional lines and make this stuff relevant in your yoga practice. Let's get back to the quiz. Okay, here we are. The quiz asks us, which of these muscles is the least involved in throwing the ball? Real quick, before I get into that, when I was coming up with this quiz, I tried to think of muscles that were not involved in throwing a ball. And the fact is that a complex motion like pitching a baseball at top speed involves basically every single muscle in your body. I could make an argument that any single muscle anywhere at all in your body is actually working in some capacity. So um, there's no such thing as like turning a muscle off or turning a muscle on. That doesn't exist. So when I ask which of these is working the least, that's really what I'm asking is which of these is sort of the least important or the, the least relevant to this motion. Now, when we get uh, less dynamic and less complex in our movements and we start focusing on yoga poses, then it starts to be easier to say, no, really, these muscles are predominantly doing most of the work. So we'll simplify at the end of the video. All right, let's get to it. So uh, which is not really involved in pitching a baseball? Pay attention to the right and left sides because some of these muscles are going to be super active on one side and not active at all or very, very inactive relatively on the other side. So we've got the right glute max. Um, so some easy ways to uh, sort of just think about this is like, look at position A and look at position B. And if the joint moved, maybe a muscle did something. So is it the muscle you want or not? So from point one to point two, uh, here's the right glute max. Did it work? Well, the right hip is in more of an extension type pose. So the chances are pretty good that the glute max did work. So I'm going to say it's active. It's doing something. Um, what about the lats, the left side latissimus dorsi? Well, the lats can rotate the shoulder to the left. And here we see that the shoulder is forward. It starts forward, but then it rotates to the left as the person pitches the ball. So I'm going to say, yeah, the lats are involved. And also the arm moves into extension right? And internal rotation. So um, I'm going to say, yeah, definitely the lats worked from point uh, from one to point two. And then the vastus lateralis on the right, this one's not so obvious. This is where we draw in the um, back functional line. But if you were to pay attention, then I think you would see that the right leg externally rotated a little bit. Uh, but more importantly, the right vastus lateralis is part of the back functional line, which we will explore in a moment. So it is working, even though it's not obvious, and I'll show you why in a second. And then the left pec uh, major, is this one working? Well, here's the left pec major. The left pec major functions, by the way, a reminder to my last video, which you should check out on the front functional line. Well, the pec major uh, functions on the front functional line. And in this case, it would draw the left shoulder forward. Well, unfortunately, we start with the left shoulder forward and then we draw the left shoulder back, which is the opposite of what the left sided pec major would be doing in this pose. Um, also, also, the pec major draws the arm forward into flexion, not back behind you. So here's the elbow and the elbow has moved back, which means the shoulder joint has moved into extension. So did the left side pec major work? No, it did not. Um, not really. 
Okay, not in a, a major capacity. Now let's check out the anatomy. Okay, here we are. This is the back functional line. It is composed of the um, left-sided, well, okay, there's one on each side, but for the purpose of the picture in the original quiz, the left-sided latissimus dorsi, the right-sided glute max, and the right-sided um, vastus lateralis. That's one of your quad muscles. These muscles connect to each other through a continuous sheet of fascia, including the thoracolumbar fa fascia, which is pictured here. So all of these muscles essentially act like one giant muscle. And what you would see is that when you pretend that they're one big muscle that goes a along the back side of the body, well, basically it's going to draw the right shoulder, or sorry, in this case, the left shoulder back and uh, the right leg back. Or another way you could look at it is that it draws the left shoulder and right knee towards each other. Okay. Um, and it's important also for rotation. So it's going to rotate the trunk or the uh, the shoulders. It's going to turn your shoulders to the left. Okay. Now I've also done you the service of um, showing you the front functional line, but you really should see my last video on the front functional line if you want a better understanding of it. Well, on the front side, he uh, was a right-handed pitcher, so the right pec major obviously is going to help throw the ball. Then the um, the uh, rectus abdominis is going to help flex the trunk and help a little bit with rotation. And then the adductor longus and the other adductors as well are going to help to uh, flex the hip and um, uh, draw the pelvis and rotate it towards the inside of the leg or adduct the, the leg, I should just say it that way. So it would draw the right shoulder forward and towards the midline and the left knee forward and towards the midline. Okay. So the front functional line and the back functional line both work at the same time on opposite sides of the body to accomplish the exact same task. So let's uh, revisit that through our picture example, and then we'll get to the yoga example. Okay. We're going to start with the back functional line on this guy. So he pitches the ball and his uh, left shoulder starts forward and then it moves backwards. So what happened is the um, lats pulled on the thoracolumbar fascia through the uh, glutes on the right side, on the opposite side, and then through the vastus lateralis to pull the left shoulder back and to extend um, the right hip and externally rotate it a little bit because of its attachment to the knee joint through the uh, vastus lateralis. So that's the back functional line. Meanwhile, at the exact same time, on the front side of the body, the right functional line, again, see my video on the front, front functional line, through the right pec and then down through the abs and then through the adductors is going to, you start with the right shoulder back and the left knee forward, but then the right shoulder rotates forward and the left knee comes inwards. Um, or really the knee stays the same place, but the pelvis rotates. It's it's basically the same. It is the same action. It just depends on your reference point. So the front functional line went like this and it pulled the front side of the, the right shoulder forward and it, it acted from the front side to create this trunk rotation and forward flexion and all that stuff. And then on the back side, um, the back functional line helped to create exactly the same movement, but from the backside. So the backside was pulling and uh, the uh, front side was really primary in that throwing motion, okay? So that means that the back functional line and the front functional line on the opposing sides are not really working. So if we take the, here's your front functional line again. So if we take the front functional line on the left side, down into the right leg, that side needs to just be chilling out. Those muscles need to relax, kind of. They need to not be super active so that the right-sided front functional line can be active, okay? So um, let's look at yoga pose. Here we are, we've got a yoga pose, and this is one of my favorites. It's a hard pose, so make sure you give plenty of modifications and um, you know regressions and stuff like that, because this is a really tough pose. But it's a great one, and it's a great one to incorporate the uh, front and back functional lines. So um, 
think about it. This is this is using exactly the same set of muscles, essentially, that the uh, baseball pitcher did, the right-handed baseball pitcher did in our example before. So the left-sided uh, back functional line, so I'm saying left-sided because I'm starting with a reference point from the shoulder, and then it goes into the right glute, and then into the right vastus lateralis. And then really, it would go down into the ant uh, anterior tibialis and then into the medial foot. But the point is here, it's lifting the left shoulder up and the right leg up. Or you could think of that like it's drawing the leg and the shoulder towards each other. Cool. And then at the same time, the front functional line. So here's the front functional line is going to go um, from the right shoulder down through the pec and through the abdominal muscles and then in to the adductors on the uh, left leg. So the right shoulder then is being pushed down into the floor and then the left foot is being drawn into the floor and the elbow and the foot are being pulled together by the front functional line from the right shoulder to the inside of the left leg. Meanwhile, the back, uh, whoop, back functional line on the opposite side is drawing the left shoulder back and the right hip up and the right leg up. Okay. So you can see how they work together synchronously, harmoniously, beautifully in order to accomplish this one very difficult task. But this is the case in any rotational task. This is the case when we're walking, that the front and back functional lines on each side trade um, jobs every time you take a step. So we use that elastic recoil, blah, blah, blah. That's a whole nother video. But the point is, I hope you can understand how these diagonal lines of uh, force and, and, and strength and, and muscular tension and, and tensegrity and, and how our muscles connect from these distant places, our shoulders to our toes, you know, our hands to our toes, you know, uh, that that connection creates complex movement. Okay. Um, no, these are not the only muscles that are working in these uh, poses and in these um, activities. Yes, the body is a lot more complicated. So if you've been thinking, well, technically this other muscle is doing things. Yeah. Lots of other muscles are doing things too. Uh, it's a complex system. And we're just trying to break it down one part at a time. And then we can, as we learn more, we can put those parts together and maybe understand greater complexity and nuance. That's it. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you get notifications, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you in the next episode.